thank you so much for joining us and of course it's about time for us to be switching gear now to another interesting part of the show where we'll be talking about good governance especially in Akwaibom state and of course to most persons you would agree with me that um, good governance means a lot of things to a lot of people and of course for the want of time we'll be looking at how public institutions conduct public affairs and manage you know public resources in a manner that promotes the rule of law and of course the realization of human resources so with that being said we will be delving straight into sustainability in governance as long as Aquibom state is concerned and we'll be looking at all that the executive governor i'm talking about umo ino has done in the last few months and um, i have with me two gentlemen here who will be giving us so much that you need to know about what is happening in Aquibom state on my right here i have um Dr. Asian Undueso, I'm sorry to use that word, he is the SSA Research and Documentation. And of course, at my extreme right, I have Mr. Solomon Ayo, who is the SSA's website and streaming. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Joshua. Nice to be here All right. on the program. All right. Yeah, thanks for having me, Joshua. You're welcome. So let me start with you. What exactly do you want to talk to us about as long as the Arise Agenda of the Governor Umo Ino is concerned? Well, the Arise Agenda of um, Governor Umo Ino in Aquarium State is, is simply a, you know, it faces, it faces an acronym uh, the Arise uh, Agenda, the Arise there, uh, five letters of um, A-R-I-S-E, uh, standing for agriculture, uh, standing for, uh, that's for the A, the agricultural um, revolution that the governor is bringing about in Aquarium State. And then talking about the R, which is the Rural Development uh, Program of the governor. And of course we have the I, where the governor wants to improve on the infrastructure in the state. And of course, we have S, uh, security uh, management, ensuring that um, um, the state remains safe. You know, over the years, Aquaibon State um, has been uh, adjudged to be the, uh, one of the safest states in Nigeria. And that's why, especially in the immediate past uh, uh, governance, our government of um, uh, Mr. Domi Manuel, where you had um, the, go the governor then, uh, Domi Manuel, ensuring that all forms of insecurity in the state were tackled and the state became so peaceful that industries that were even you know leaving the country in other parts of the country you know were arriving in acquiring states uh, <laughs> in the so this governor is uh, placing premium on uh, security management and then of course the e they're standing for education um, uh, educational advancement so the governor is ensuring that those uh, critical uh, layers of development are um, well brought to fruition under his tenure, and that's the Arise. Then, as um, a, a moral, um, you know, uh, rebirth, the Arise agenda uh, simply stands for, you know, it means a way, it's a wake up call on the people of Kaiwan State to, you know, to rise up, embrace opportunities that are emerging, embrace um, the development uh, uh, spree that the governor is bringing in, and key into all of these um, developments and be useful to themselves and to society. So that is, in a nutshell, what the Rice Agenda is um, uh, all about. And when we talk about um, agricultural development, the governor for Kwaiwan State has said so in ensuring that the, you know, Whatever was achieved um, during the tenure of um, his immediate predecessor, um, Mr. Dewey Manuel, is heightened. For example, uh, two months ago, he spent a couple of days in Port Novo, uh, that's in Benin Republic, studying the uh, Songhai model of uh, agricultural uh, development, uh, farming. You know, the Songhai model is integrated farming approach, uh, you know, in agriculture, where people are actively involved in several stages of agricultural uh, you know uh, farming uh, farming and he wants to replicate what is happening there in Aquaibon State. Uh, a month ago he flagged off the first of those farms in uh, the local government area for Aquaibon State. He wants to ensure that all the local government areas in Aquaibon State have a model farm managed by government to act as um, you know a massive employer of, of labor and of course, to also serve as a, a veritable tool for uh, food sufficiency in the state. So that is um, ongoing right now. Uh, Imusubio has one. All the local government areas 
have donated at least 50 hectares of land to the governor, to the government of Kwaiwon State, so that the state government can move in and start the farming uh, done. And that is what is ongoing. And this agricultural development, you know, say, focuses more on uh, or focuses more in the rural areas. Because we know that the vast majority of um, resources that we have in, in the state, uh, culture-wise, are embedded you know, in the rural community. So the governor wants to ensure that those rural communities are well developed and um, the potentials they are harnessed and, and they become more viable. In the past, so many, so many agricultural ventures have um, failed uh, because sometimes the farmers get discouraged uh, going to farming because the access uh, sensibility to their, you know, to where they are producing these um, uh, materials uh, are not there. And even when they, you know, get those farm, those produce, to produce um, uh, harvested, to offtake them becomes a problem. So under the integrated farming um, that this government is introducing in Aquaman State. Each local government will have a major uh, uh, farm of governments. I know integrated farming means that all of the uh, uh, you know, peculiarities of each local government areas are taken into cognizance. For example, you have a local community where rice production is predominant, then integrated farming there, a uh, farm there would f focus more on you know, uh, rice, uh, rice, uh, rice cultivation and um, uh, mechanize, um, you know. Uh, implement for those uh, uh, for cultivation of rice will be uh, installed in those areas in the uh, government-owned farms, and the farmers who are also engaging in rice farming in those communities will not have the stress of having to look outside for off-takers for their products. The farm, the uh, the, the mechanized farm, the you know the integrated farm of government will be able to take uh, produces from farmers around the locality and they will process there and they will have much more value for, their, uh, for what they are producing. And beyond that, the governor is also bent on ensuring, like I was talking about rural development, ensuring that the rural communities in the state have basically the equal opportunities that are available in the urban centers. Because we know that people are, you know, severally, people um, tend to engage in the rural urban migration because of um, maybe improved facilities, uh, improved services in the urban centers. And those are the things that the governor wants to take to the rural communities. And recently at flag of um, uh, rural projects, in fact, what this, uh, is what he calls the one project per local government area, uh, where critical infrastructure are provided in rural communities. He has also flag of uh, model schools in the state, one is almost ready right now. It's at about 90% completion, uh, and then one has been flagged off. Uh, and it wants to have this in all the local government areas. A healthcare delivery is also trying to ensure that rural, the last government in Ohio State under Mr. Do Emmanuel, had remodeled and also established a total of 14 general hospitals, secondary healthcare facilities in Ohio State. This governor says, okay, now let's now focus on primary health care facilities. So he wants to ensure that the wards in Aquarium State, all the things, we have, about, we have um, uh, 368 wards in Aquarium State, he wants to ensure that all of these wards, uh, as many as possible, have basic um, primary health care facilities. So that people don't go clustering in the secondary and tertiary health care facilities that we have in Aquarium State. And that is what he's also putting in place in the rural communities. So um, all of these are to ensure that people who are farming in the rural areas have basic amenities and are comfortable to stay in their rural communities. And then beyond that, the model schools that he's building in the rural areas are, are, are going to have facilities where teachers can reside on camp, you know, in the school camp, uh, compound and teach students. Okay. So, so all of these things are those things that he's putting in place. You've really spoken, um, you've really spoken well and a whole lot of issues you know, have been mentioned. But for the sake of our time, we're going to take you know, each of those issues one at a time. But first of all, let me swing over to my extreme right now to bring in Mr. Solomon Ayo to, you know, shed more light directly on education. Because obviously, when you have, you know, an illiterate society, you understand what the side effects or the, um, the, the, the you, know, you understand what it translates into, especially when it comes to criminality. Because the average mind there who is not educated can be brainwashed. And of course, you know the effect of being brainwashed 
it's always going to you know tilt towards the negative side of life and of course we're going to see what it will translate to, to the society so talk to us about um the executive governor i mean um, uno, uno's, um um, administration, especially when it comes to education. What is he addressing in education today as we speak? Yeah, thank you very much once again for having me in your program. Okay, um, let me correct the my name in the prefix. A special assistant, not SSA. Okay. Special assistant on website and multimedia. Right. Now, okay. this is a um, government that has paid um, premium to education advancement in the state. Just like uh, my colleague has said, that the governor is doing a lot in the educational sector, starting from remodeling. Okay, when we say remodeling, so many things are taken into consideration. The ICT component of it, right now, we we've, we've started developing um, an online learning for our primary school. What level are you on that? Uh, about eighty percent. Yeah, we are implementing them in all the primary school, in all the model primary school that the governor is developing, and um, you, you and, and 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 that is going on in all the thirty-one local government areas in the state. And let me also say this: you know, the, we have a governor that has been the private sector before he became the governor, and he knows the he knows the usefulness of technology in running governance, and he had. Um, also said in governance is going to use technology to run the activities of governance. And that's why he carefully uh, appointed me as a special assistant on website and multimedia. Um, I'm a website developer. And um, right now in Aquaibo State, he said, clearly, I need a site that I can communicate with the people. And now in Aquaibo State, we have one of the best highly interactive website where the governor communicate with the citizens directly. How inclusive is that when it comes to participation? Participation is, 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 is massive. Now people don't need to go to the governor's office to see the governor or to, for example, now we now have um, um, e-governance where the governor doesn't need to, to, to see your memo in paper. You send it through online. Is it real time? Yeah, real time. Real time. And then he now approves memo online. Okay, that has been integrated. And then um, when I said citizen participation, you, you don't need to have the governor, governor's number because he is 100%. He has the login details dashboard back end of the website on his iPad. So he sees all the statistics. Where are you? What, what are your questions? And then he responds them. The ones he can, he push them to, uh, uh, he respond. The ones he will push to different ministries to be for, 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 for prompt actions. For, for prompt actions. So, uh, uh, in Aquaibum, the governor has paid premium in ICT, in governance. So, when you talk about ICT, we understand, but talk to us about the curriculum. Because, obviously, the curriculum for most of the schools we see in Nigeria today is almost obsolete in terms of current reality. So what is it doing as regards revamping the curriculum activity yes. using ICT? First, first, it was start with um, infrastructure. Training, training the infrastructure. Infrastructure was the first. Can I hear mm -hmm. express himself? I'll, 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 I'll fall back to you. Yes, first, is, it must start with the infrastructure and secondly, the training of teachers using ICT. You know, if we are planning to upgrade, uh, you know, the world right now is going to e-learning. And then if you don't train your staff, definitely they will be backward. Sure. And now the governor has put a model to start running training for all the teachers in Aquaibum State, primary school and secondary school, the use of ICT in education. Right, you want to say something to that? Yeah, yeah in addition to that is the fact that the, the governor is actually um, uh, remodeling everything about um, education in Aquarium State. In fact, I remember when he went with the Minister of uh, Education to the uh, model school, he, and, and then he said that, you know, it's, sometimes people talk about um, children dropping out of school. Don't forget, in Aquarium State, we are still running uh, free and compulsory education for for um, children in public schools, both in primary and secondary. Uh, so when you talk about children, um, out of school children, it cannot be in this kind of school. Because it's making the school to be so comfortable, so conducive for learning and uh, of course the curriculum has been um, 
uh, reinvigorated and made much more interesting and, and in line with the realities of the 21st century. Uh, you go to a primary school now, you think that you are in a private um, standards um, institution. Institution, uh, not, not a school outside this, the, the country. In fact, I, I doubt if I've seen a public school in that model in Nigeria. So that standard has been set and the minister himself did confirm that he wishes that this should be a standard uh, uh, you know, for, for all schools in Nigeria. So that shows the standard he has raised. You know, he is making uh, residing on camp, uh, you know, in the school camp, uh, compound to be compulsory for, for teachers so that they can effectively monitor the progressions of students uh, or pupils in schools. And then in le uh, leisure facilities are also established. You know, uh, uh, beyond the uh, educational advancement, there's also the psychological uh, you know, appeal that should be there in, uh, in, in learning, to make uh, learning, to make uh, pupils to, you know, get through both um, through um, knowledge acquisition and, of course, uh, enlarging their uh, horizons let in terms me, let of me put you on a pause mode. Let me put you on a pause mode because you just said something very, very cogent and I need us to quickly address it. When you talk about making some of these schools appealing for persons who might want to, you know, go to such school, is he also saying, because they say charity begins, you know, from home, is he also going to be legislating or making sure that even certain public office holders have their children in those schools if you say it is appealing why are there not these individuals who put their children in such schools well i i, I see that the, the issue the issue is this sometimes laws uh, like people used to say laws are are, are not made for uh, man uh, our man is not made for law but laws were made for man uh, if you are for example in a quiet state you whether you are a public office holder or you are a private uh, citizen and you see a school with the best learning facilities in the state that even the private schools cannot measure up to a, sc a school where teachers are resident on, on campus a school that has modern sport facilities uh, computer labs especially when it comes to farming there are accessible road in the farms and of course to the urban centers where these things will be sold without accessible road your effort of bringing such laudable ideas is almost you know impossible impossible yeah. so what is it doing as regards making sure that there are accessible road to the farm and back Yes, the governor, like I, I was trying to say initially, uh, the the third leg of his um, uh, manifesto, the the I there stands for infrastructural uh, uh, expansion, um, uh, and and you know that in the last era of um, uh, in the last dispensation in Akwa State under uh, Mr. Doe Emmanuel, Akwa State had a great leap, massive leap in infrastructural developments. The, the governor then uh, went into massive road construction. In fact, there was no local government area in Akwa State, 31 local government areas, none of them, without a massive road project by that um, administration. And Paso Moino was a member of that government as well. And he's seen that the people of Kwaibon State, governance in Kwaibon State has been elevated to a state where if you perform well, they are still saying that it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know, so, so he is saying that he was going to even do better than that. And in rural development, that's why a full fledged ministry was, uh, was created for rural development uh, in Kwaibon State. And he, he, you know, in his, uh, so far, within his 100 days, he has flagged off at least seven rural road projects in Aquaman states. That is even before even before his uh, first those hundred days. Lead to the farms, those roads to the farms. those roads are to very uh, the economic left centers yeah. of the respective local government areas in Aquaman states. Okay. And the local government chairmen are the ones who also choose where they want the state government to site the farms in their locality. And they are the ones who decide which project the government should do. Now this government is doing, the government of Pasomoino is doing what we call participatory governance. Making sure that people take ownership of projects. If they come to a locality, for example, where I come from in Eket, and say, okay, stakeholders, which rural road do you want us to do that would be of more economic importance to you? And they say, okay, they want this one because it leads to the, our major economic base. The government say, okay, fine. Let's sit about doing that. All right. So that is how it is being done. And that is why 
around the state, people are singing uh, and, 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 and celebrating good governance under uh, Pastor Umoino. But there's something else that he has done, which so many people, in fact, I went on the show media yesterday to study comments, reactions. It is the sustainability of good governance, of projects, of programs initiated by his predecessor. You know, we've seen that uh, uh, all around Africa, you've always had a situation where someone comes into office and then he feels that, oh, to become a star boy, you now have to start, you know, discontinuing with all of the projects that your president had. You now start your own and you start condemning and pushing blames. To, uh, that's all what is continue. happening here. He is doing that perfectly. All right. Yesterday yeah. he was in, 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 in Lagos to celebrate... Um, the Thanksgiving service of his predecessor in office, um, His Excellency Mr. Udom Emmanuel, and I can, I can, I can, I can, uh, I, I could feel the emotions raised there. The Ibadan past governor started what we have now as, as a signature in Akwaibon State, the Ibom Air, the only state-owned airline in Africa, and just um, f three days ago, uh, on Friday, far away in Mirabel, uh, Canada, the first of ten new air buses that were acquired by the government. During the t tenure of um, uh, Mr. Do Emmanuel, we're secured, we're, we're, we're taking delivery off by this government. And the immediate past governor, who has signed that contract, was even there, uh, you know, to even uh, supervise and make sure that those, those were the aircraft right. that he has signed for. All so right. that continuity, that synergy is also helping. And the infrastructure that we uh, put in place by the former governor that we're not completed, this governor, apart from starting his own, is also completing those infrastructure. Okay. So in that way, we are having that um, uh, sustainability in acquiring states. All right. Now let me swing to Mr. Solomon because he is the SSA. The SA. The yes. SA. Sorry. Yes. When it comes to website and streaming. Yes, please. I want to direct this question to you, and I want you to narrow it to security of the state. Yes, please. Without you know, adequate security in a state, you can assure me that both local and foreign direct investment cannot be directed to that state. That's I'm correct. talking about um, a quiet bomb state, yeah, for instance. That's right. Now, how in your capacity are you driving ICT to make sure that the state is secured using that particular um, apparatus? That's right. Okay, first, first and foremost, you know, um, using, um, secure, using ICT and security, you must have a good network infrastructure meaning internet infrastructure and um, in all the centers where we have those security infrastructure we have um, a broadband first it was fiber optics very fast internet access now we now uh, we've now deployed the new starlink especially in the remote areas okay and then you know with internet we can connect anywhere in aquarium and then we have a hub where we connect all the local government, all the inter interior area that you that you don't have access to internet. But right now, in the security department, we have deployed that. Is okay. it working as we speak? Working as we speak. Okay. As we as we speak, it's working. You know, the governor, in his um, wisdom, when he assumed office, um, set up a, a set up a brand new ministry called Internal Security. Headed by a, a retired major, a general, a general, mm. headed by a retired general, Coco is in, yeah. and then he has been working with the ICT department to deploy this technology to assist in fighting crime in Akwaibom. Some people were recruited across all of the local government areas to go on training in um, in, in farming. Um, Forty-two of them so far recruited and sent, sponsored by the state government, to, to, to be trained uh, in Porto Novo, and. The people in Akwaibom State, all farmers in the state, that this was even done before this time. That's why I was talking about sustainability, you know, in government policies. Um, this governor before now was the commissioner for lands and, and water resources in Akwaibom State, and before then had been executive director of agri investment in Akwaibom State, uh, working in the governor's office. D during that period, he was the man who went around the entire state to take stock of farmers. So as we speak. There's a data containing all farmers, you know, data. in acquiring state. There's a database for that. And the government is now looking into how to um, get improved seedlings, improved inputs for farmers to use in cultivation. Like I said before, apart from establishing f um, model farms across the state, government is also seeing how it will get the farmers encouraged 
into a back to farm on you know farm on large scale uh, uh, scale and uh, large scale and it wants to ensure that farmers don't have those grudges that they used to have those reluctance they used to have if, if for example someone has a massive farmland this the you know that, that um, reluctance to explore all of that will be there because it will say okay if i get all of this place uh, cultivated now what will i sell how will i have it um, uh, so but if you are a registered farmer in the states and go, you get those inputs that's the number one commitment that means government has the right of first re uh, first refusal once your communities are ready for harvesting, simply tell the government, okay, we, we, the, the farm, our farmland is ready. Come and harvest. This is how much you're selling. And government pays you the money of takes those products and makes it much more useful to the larger population. So that's how it will improve food security and, of course, uh, employment opportunities for the people of Kwai. All right. States. So finally, as we wrap up, a, a healthy society is a prosperous society. What is the state of affairs when it comes to public health in Ibom State as we have it today? I, I just said before now that um, we had had a massive um, revolution in healthcare in, uh, in the healthcare delivery in Ibom mm -hmm. State. In Ibom State, this governor is sustaining the free healthcare um, services to uh, the to infants, to expectant mothers, and of course to the aged from the ages of um, 65 in the state in public healthcare facilities and. This government is going to aggressive um, rural healthcare infrastructure. Um, uh, model healthcare centers are being built across the rural communities in the state as Thank we you. speak right now. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on the show. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, All right, Joshua. The, all right, that's the much we can share with you today, and we do hope that you really benefited you know, one or two points from what has been said. And of course, as time goes by, we will get them also on the show to tell us more about how much uh, the governor has been doing since he got into office. But of course, we need to go right about now because we've really spent so much of our time. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Joshua Kata. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.